Okay, World of Commerce 2023. Welcome. Uh, this talk's called Advanced New Features in C64 OS. I am Greg Nassi. Uh, so hello everyone and welcome to this opcoders presentation on C64 OS. Um, I have a few things that I'm going to uh, go over in this part of the presentation. Uh, for people who don't know, um, I will give a very brief introduction of what C64 OS is. Um, then I'm going to give a progress report on what uh, I did over 2023. I'm going to give a brief overview of new features that were added in the new releases this year. Um, touch on a couple of the highlights, and then we'll just, we'll just uh, get right into a live demo. So, brief introduction. Uh, C64 OS is an operating system enhancement for the Commodore 64, um, and it's designed to expand upon the way the Commodore 64 already works. But it adds some desperately needed new features. So, for example, um, it has a graphical user interface that you control with the mouse, but it's in character mode for speed. Uh, it has zippy pull-down hierarchical menus with uh, customizable keyboard shortcuts. It has support for multiple mass storage devices, including all of their partitions and their subdirectories, and an awareness of where you are on the, on the devices. Um, and it's uh, built on a modular, uh, highly customizable, highly modular design with many reusable small components, such as drivers, libraries, uh, toolkit classes, utilities, data type loaders, and savers. Uh, and it also has uh, powerful memory management for both main memory and also for the REU. Uh, so in a word, C64 OS is an application platform. So, uh, version 1.0, the commercial release of version 1.0 was September 20th of last year. And um, when I first started selling it, I, I had no idea whether people would be interested. Uh, but I'm pretty pleased with the way the sales went. I consider it to have been a commercial success. Um, and uh, I'm now at the end of my fifth stock run and about to order another stock run, so I'm, I'm pretty happy with the sales. Um, but version 1.0 is, of course, not where it ends. It's, that was where it began. Uh, so over the last 14 months, uh, Opcoders Inc., it's me, uh, has released um, five software updates, free software updates, plus some sample media packs. Uh, so these free updates, um, they have fixed many bugs, they have improved the user experience, and they have added some amazing new features that enhance what C64 OS can do and what you can do with the C64. And we're just getting started because I have a ton of uh, ideas for things I want to add. So, um, first two releases that I put out were mainly for bug fixes and stability. Uh, with a couple of couple of features, uh, the third update brought some pretty useful new features, which I'm going to show you. Um, but the fourth update was uh, was really big. I spent more time on the fourth update than on the first three combined. And the fifth update was just released in the last couple of weeks, um, and it introduces some very cool new architectural changes that I think make the C64 really shine. So, um, here are some of the new features in, in these uh, releases. Um, these were mostly bug fixes and stability, but I added some features like um, C128 auto boots. So you can just turn on your Commodore 128, you can configure it to boot right into C64 OS. Um, I added some new desktops, a new mouse driver, um, I added a checksum tool, and I improved the first run setup. I made better support for IBE 64, and I fixed little things like you know, not crashing when you play with the restore key. Uh, and I squashed a whole bunch of bugs after version, the version 1.0 release. I understand I've lots of bugs. Um, now, version 1.3 was the first one that really added some pretty cool new features. Um, it adds um, the new mount utility, which has the ability to mount uh, disk images, D64s, D71s, D81s, DMPs, and the file manager gained an understanding of disk images, so it, it knows when disk images are mounted and it can unmount them 
and so on. Uh, the checksum tool got turned into a checksum utility. Um, and I added a new mouse driver for the Micromus PS2 mouse adapter and the Mouster USB mouse adapter, which is the one that I'm using here. Um, and those um, have support for uh, wheel mice. So I added uh, wheel mouse, uh, or I added support for the mouse wheel throughout the entire operating system. Now I talked to uh, Jens Schoenfeld, I think his name is, from um, Individual Computers. He sells the PS2 uh, the MicroMouse adapter, and he said that C64 OS is like the first software that actually uses the scroll wheel to scroll content. So I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm pretty happy about that. Um, I added uh, new features in the mouse utility for customizing the wheel, things like you can now right click on the title bar of utilities to window shade, um, all the disk image types got assigned to the new mount utility, I improved support for IDE64, and I made a bunch of uh, small UI improvements. Um, version 1.04 was the big one, um, and I started naming the releases, uh, so I called this one the multimedia release. Um, because um, I have spent some time developing um, a new graphics container file format, which I call Commodore Graphics, or CGFX for short. Um, and it has the ability to store um, normal, like native uh, graphics modes, as well as some popular uh, demo scene graphics modes, um, as well as new uh, multi frame images, which can be shown as animations, or panoramas, or as 3D models, which we'll, we'll look at. Uh, there's new data type uh, loaders for Petsky bots and for screenshots and backdrops. Uh, there's a new uh, option for configuring a bitmap boot screen. And to go along with the multimedia theme, um, I added the SID preview utility, which can play piece of music. Um, I added multiple customizable boot modes, an RTC driver for the Turbo Chameleon 64, a bunch of new tools, um, and a couple other things like um, the ability to uh, overwrite when doing uh, recursive copy and move uh, operations in File Manager. And 1.05 is brand new, uh, just released in the last couple of weeks. I call it the Fast App Switching release because its primary feature is something called Fast App Switching which requires an REU, 17XX compatible REU. Um, it uh, also has uh, a new switcher utility for being able to switch between all the open applications um, from any application to any other. And there's a new usage utility that supersedes the older memory utility. Um, and this one is for visualizing uh, main memory, uh, the allocation of REU banks, and uh, also a cool uh, CPU usage visualization. And um, I added a bunch of new keyboard shortcuts. Um, I uh, improved the PRG runner. I've got better memory management for, especially for the REU. I improved disk image support in this version. Um, I added limited support for Vice FS if you're running inside Vice. And any more bugs were fixed. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, hopefully people will realize that I have been working like a maniac in my basement to bring lots of improvements to C64OS, and I, I plan to continue uh, to work like a maniac. Um, so the major highlights are fast app switching, which is a pretty big architectural change that brings C64OS much closer to multitasking, um, and graphics and sound. So there's, uh, there's support for all the native video modes um, inside split screen and full screen mode inside C64 OS now. There's new mouse and keyboard controls for moving into and out of the, the video modes, new loaders and savers. And of course, there's the new uh, CGFX container file format, which uh, brings bitmap animations and which you can interact with with the mouse. So, let us now just hop right into showing the demo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I want to see demo. <laughs> All 
Um, so I, I do have kind of limited time here, so I'm not really going to be showing features that I've shown in the past. Um, there's, there's videos on YouTube of demos I've given in the past if you want to check those out. I'm mostly just going to be showing new stuff uh, here. So the first thing I wanted to, oh, first thing I wanted to say is um, there's this new support for uh, multiple boot modes. So you can just, when you boot up, you can hold one, two, three, or four for safe mode, two customizable modes, or um, a developer mode. So I'm going to uh, boot up in a customizable mode. And in this mode, I have configured it to use a bitmap boot screen. And this graphic is uh, included in 1.05. It was created for me by a famous demo coder uh, graphician called Sarge. I think he did some good work on that. So here we are in uh, App Launcher. And I am going to start by just opening um, about this app. So here is an example of uh, <clears throat> a utility that um, over the course of the year has been totally rewritten using the toolkit. Um, and click on these uh, applications back here to see their metadata. And some, uh, some apps have gotten cool new icons. And we have so many buttons down here. So for example, reset. Um, applications are stored in bundles, and they can kind of start to gather uh, temporary data or settings from utilities. If you hit reset, um, you will reset an application bundle back to kind of its virgin state. And we have this copy button, which we can click, and it'll copy this metadata onto the clipboard. So next, I will open the clipboard utility. Um, and you can see that, of course, that metadata that I just uh, copied from the other utility is, is on the clipboard now. And um, another uh, thing I mentioned is you can, you can now right-click on uh, these title bars to fold them up into window shade mode, so you don't have to use the keyboard for that. And the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to just jump into this test ground application. So TestGround is kind of just a playground where I, uh, I try out new features in C64OS. Okay. And so you can see that this, this whole uh, user interface here is built using the C64OS object-oriented uh, widget toolkit. And these scroll bars here, um, like, like this one here that you see, is this part of toolkit. And so now, um, everywhere where there's a scroll bar, um, you can now scroll the, the mouse wheel to roll that content, which is pretty cool. So next I'll open the utilities utility. And um, you can see that um, there's a scroll bar in here. And so you know we can, we can also scroll, scroll that. So all of these um, things have gained mouse wheel support without actually having to have any extra code added to them, simply because they embed a scrollable region. But now that we scroll this, we can just put our mouse over top of this, and we can scroll that in the background, which is kind of cool. And um, of course, if you notice, there's also a, a scroll bar on this sidebar, and we can actually scroll that whole content. And what's kind of neat here is that um, although in, in each of these views there's only something simple, like in here, there's just a list, and in here, there's just a text view. But in here, there's like a whole hierarchy of other controls that are laid out, so it really shows that the, the mouse events are being routed through the view hierarchy. So next, I'm going to use this utilities utility to open the mouse utility. And we can see that um, this, this utility has also been updated from 1.0. Um, we have the ability to... Uh, customize the wheel direction and the scrolling speed. Of course, we can also change our cursor. So maybe I'll pick this kind of cursor and change its color. And now I will just uh, set this aside. And I'll click in here, and I'll type something like, uh, you know, hello, everyone. If I can type, hello, everyone. How are you? Okay. And then using keyboard shortcuts, I can select all and hit copy. So now, um, I'm just going to leave this there, and I'm going to say system, go home, and boom, 
Look how fast it just jumped back to the app. Like it just instantly jumped back to the app launcher. And there's a couple things I wanted to point out here. Um, so first is that um, the mouse pointer, even though I didn't click save on the mouse utility in the other application, the mouse pointer is still the, the way that I changed it to. The clipboard utility is still open the way it was when I left uh, from App Launcher, but it also um, noticed that the contents of the clipboard changed, and so it, it just auto-refreshed like that. So I'll, I'll do that again. Go to test ground. Okay, and boom, it's pretty, jumped pretty fast. And you can see, of course, the mouse utility is still open. So we can just change our mouse utility back to the way I like it. And um, maybe I'll change this again. And copy that. And now I will drop back to App Launcher and boom. So very, very fast. Um, so what, what you're seeing there is what the result of what I call uh, fast app switching. So next, I will load the file manager. Um, and so now, of course, file manager is not, has not yet been opened. This is the first time we're opening it. So when you open an application for the first time, you see this kind of uh, loading splash screen. OK, and uh, now it's open. But of course, uh, app launcher is still open. So we can just say, go app launcher. And we're back in App Launcher. And of course, Test Ground is still open. Right? So we can flip into Test Ground. And now we can you know, just go home. And now uh, we can hit Keyboard Shortcut, say, to jump to the File Manager. And then now we're back in File Manager. Um, yeah, so that, of course, is the result of the fact that you know, all three of these uh, apps are all now open. Um, now, of course, from File Manager, we can also launch uh, applications. So I can go to the Applications directory, and oh, of course, Test Ground is here, right? So I can double click Test Ground from here, switch right into there. Most utility is still open. This time, when I say go home, um, I go back to the File Manager because that's the place from which I launched into Test Ground. Okay, so next I'll open um, Gallery. And I'll pick something like, I guess, wallpapers, maybe? Is, uh, is Stephen Combs? Is Steve Combs in the room? Yeah. Yeah. Steve Combs in the room. Ah, Steve Combs in the room. Hi, Steve. OK, yeah. So uh, 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 Stephen Combs did a, did a video on, on uh, YouTube. And it took him a while to realize that you could actually just drag this bar up, it's kind of Amiga style. <laughs> yeah, but you, you, you figured it out. You figured it out. Um, now, in my defense, uh, it is actually in the user's guide, um, but I discovered from uh, watching my early users that reading the user's guide is not always at the top of people's list of things to do. <laughs> <laughs> so um, one of the sort of small improvements to the user experience that I, um, that I added is, you know, now you can say options, and there's, there's options in here to open the split screen, and then that'll kind of give you a clue, right? And then there's also options to go to, to full screen. And also, um, I've added the ability to get into and out of full screen with just a double click. So you can now get into and out of these video modes completely using, you can do it completely with the keyboard, or you can do it completely with the mouse. Um, OK. So now we'll, we'll jump back, jump back home. And of course, because I love showing off fast app switching, I'll jump back into gallery, and we can see that it jumps back very quickly, and the graphic data is still loaded, so you know you don't have to wait for that to reload. Okay. Right, now. So we'll go back to file manager again. So the situation that we are in now, of course, is that we have uh, several applications are open, and of course, um, if you double click on an app you're going to find out in a hurry that that app was already open because it's going to switch to it very quickly. But, um, you know, how can we get, a, get an overview of all the applications that are already open and kind of manage those things? So for that, we have uh, the new switcher utility, which is available from the utilities menu. So that means that it's available from within any application. And there's also a keyboard shortcut, Control S, to open that. And we get this switcher utility. And it lists uh, all of the currently open uh, applications. 
and lists them in the order in which they were most recently accessed. So file manager is at the top of the list because it's actually the thing that you see in the background. Gallery is the second one because that's what we opened most recently. And also it, it highlights the, the second one from the top of the list automatically to facilitate quickly switching back and forth between the two most uh, recently used apps. So we can just click on these and we see a state and we see uh, how much memory they're using. Of course, these are all only using 64K. And so I can use the switcher here to go into test ground. Okay, and then I can go home. And you see that these just, they just, whoop, they just uh, switch places because test ground is now the most recent app. And if I go into gallery, where of course we still have graphic data, um, and I go home, you know, they, they switch back again. So we also have, uh, so you can double click on these or you can click the switch button or press return to trigger that default button. Um, and of course we can also um, just click this quit button. So if I, if I want to quit gallery, I can just click quit. And it has just been expunged from the REU and its memory, any memory it was using has been uh, released. Question? If that had uh, data that needed to be saved. Oh, this is the very next part of the demo. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was just, oh, here, I'll read my text. The next thing I'm going to show you is how C64 OS handles saved and unsaved states. So, I will uh, open chess. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, so chess happens to be the kind of, uh, it's kind of a demo app at this point, but it, uh, it's, it's the kind of application that has the ability to produce data that can then be saved to a file. And then, so here's the standard file picker. Um, we can navigate the file system, but I, I have this uh, game ready to go um, as a file. Just open that. And so now we, we see that this game is, is in progress. And because I just opened this game, um, we can see that um, it's already in a saved state, right? Because it's, I just loaded it. Um, but if, if I make a move like this, um, now all of a sudden uh, it is not in a saved state. So if I go home now, um, you can see that uh, chess is now on the list, but it has this state that says unsaved. And the button that said quit now says kill. So the kill button actually does the same as the quit button but it's there to tell you that you're going to lose unsaved changes, okay? So we will um, just switch back into chess, and this time I'll choose save. So I've just written that out to the, to the file that's currently open. We can actually see the file that's open here on the stats bar. So just wrote that out to that file. This button's now grayed out because it's, it's in a saved state. And when I go home, this just automatically changed from unsaved to frozen. And so now if we click the button when it says quit, we can be reasonably sure that we're not going to lose any unsaved data. So um, the C64 OS configure tool uh, allows you to choose how many REU banks you want to dedicate for use for fast app switching. Um, one application requires one 64 kilobyte bank, plus the operating system takes one 64 kilobyte bank. Um, now, if you continue to open applications, um, eventually you may run out of available uh, fast app switching banks. Um, and the operating system will automatically expunge the, the least recently accessed one. So it's basically the, the one that's at the bottom of this list is at the most risk of being auto expunged if the OS needs new space. However, it is smart enough excuse me, to avoid um, auto expunging unsaved apps. So it will, it will auto expunge the least recently accessed one that is safe to uh, expunge. So I'm going to jump back into chess here again, show something else. Um, so we, uh, I'm going to open the switcher here. So this just to show we can open the switcher inside an application so we can jump directly to one of these other apps from here. Um, of course, we also see this scroll bar back here, and yes, we can we can scroll that content with the mouse wheel, which is pretty cool. 
And there's also this new feature here called Drop to Ready. And so if we click this button, um, we're going to drop to the ready prompt. Um, by default, it'll go back to the root directory of the system partition. But if I hold the control key, um, it's going to actually leave me at the location where this application's open file is. So, oops, oops. so we can see um, this is the, I don't know my best anymore. So you can see that um, we're in the directory where the file is. And of course, we're truly at the, at the ready prompt here. Like, you know, you can, you can, uh, hello, like this. Right? Um, and you can run other regular C64 software from here, or you can also do some sort of uh, file management tasks from the command line, like we could copy this file, or we could create a new directory. And when we want to um, return to C64 OS, we simply run the booter as though we were booting up from scratch, except this time, uh, it immediately returns to the operating system, and so that's a feature that I call Fast Reboot, which is kind of a partner of fast uh, app switching. And as you can see, it's, it's actually taking us back to like exactly where we were. The same app, the same game state, the same utility is open, and so on. Okay, now I'm going to look at something uh, totally different. Which gears here? So I'm going to go to my music directory. With uh, HBSC samples. So we have some um, Sig music here, so maybe I'll double click this one. I don't know if sound is actually going to come through this HDMI cable. Do you know? Uh, on the speakers? It yeah, it should. Okay. So um, Sig files have been uh, assigned to open in the new Sig preview utility, and we can just hit. Okay, so that's a bit loud, so we'll, uh, we'll stop that. But you can see that we can, we can open uh, uh, this utility. Actually, I, I will I'll leave a play for a second. Um, and I'll show that everything is live like while it's playing. Okay, so it's just to, to show you that you know, all these things are, are live. Like you can scroll through the list, and you can you can pick other files, and you can move the, move the window around. Um, so I will say, I don't know, maybe I'll drink that. Pick another file here, like, uh, like this one here. And so we can just hit load. If the utility is already open, we can just hit load. And play that. So we have these little things to, to flip through the various uh, information, and you can pick different tracks if there were different tracks. And these fields are also live, so we can we can scroll through these, and we can even you know copy this this content to the clipboard, which is pretty cool. Okay, so I'm gonna change track again, show something else. So I am going to click on my SD to IEC device here. And I'm going to uh, go into this images partition. Then I'm going to go into games. We can see here that I have a list of um, D64s um, of various games. So I'll maybe I'll, I'll double click, uh, say, Nightland.D64. Now all of these extensions have been assigned to the new mount utility. And it gives us a little bit of information about the, uh, the file and the fact that it's able to be mounted here. So I click mount, and now um, this is the, ins, the internal contents of the disk image. <coughs> and you can see that this path bar is now uh, clear. Um, these menu navigation uh, options undergo, and creating a new directory, um, the, these basically all the directory things have been disabled, because file manager knows that this type of disk image is not the kind that supports subdirectories. So now I'll go to another tab, and I'll go to my uh, SD2IC device. We can see here that the um, partition type has now been changed to a 4 for 1541, or D64, and the name of the, the, uh, the disk is the partition title. 
go into, um, so I'll go to my main partition, and then I'll go into my games directory, where I, I just have a collection of, of actual game files. And here, I can create a directory. And I'll give this directory a name. Maybe I'll call it Highland. Okay. And I can go into this directory. And so now, um, I can select the files from the disk image. And I can say, copy those to tab 2. And so now I'm copying files, just using the file manager, it's a regular copy system to copy files out of the, the uh, disk image and into a regular folder in my main partition. Okay. So we can go here and we can see that we've got some files in this directory. And from this tab, I can say options unmount. It's a new feature in file manager. And it just unmounted that disk image, brings us right back to where we were. And if I were to go to my uh, device, my partition list, you can see that it's, it's just a native partition of game. So speaking of uh, games, um, I'm going to show how we can launch into a game. So I'll go to App Launcher. And oh, there's the metadata from the SID that I copied. So I can close that. And I'll go to, say, desktop 4, because the app launcher has multiple desktops. So on this desktop, um, I've configured uh, a bunch of uh, games that I like playing recently. And I've configured the desktop backdrop, backdrop with this kind of cool games theme uh, thing. <coughs> so I can uh, just double click on one of these games. And we get the PRG runner utility. And of course, I can click on these other uh, files back here. And you can see that the metadata is auto-updating. That's new since version 1.0. But I'll, I like .cosmos, so I'll, I'll go into that. And I just click Run. Okay. Okay. So that's what it takes to load the game and to uh, get into the game. Now, if I want to uh, return to C64 OS, um, I just reset the machine. So if you had a physical reset button, you could just hit the reset button. And now, um, it's just like when we use the drop to ready feature. Um, we simply run the booter again, except this time, you know, we're, we're just that quickly, we're just right back into the app launcher. And of course, we could just click on, and the utility is still open, so we could just click on another uh, game here, click run, and we would, we would uh, launch that game. So um, I think that you know fast app switching, fast reboot actually starts to make C64 OS kind of useful for being able to jump in and out of uh, other software. So the next thing we have here is uh, uh, down here on the status bar, you can see the available memory. So I'm going to double click that. And this is a uh, utility which is uh, it, it supersedes the older memory utility. Um, this one's been completely rewritten in Toolkit and has three tabs for RAM, RU, and CPU. So uh, this is showing us all of the current allocation of memory in, in this particular app bank. And of course, we can, we can click on these pages. And if we hit the peak button, it'll open the peak utility, and you can examine the memory contents of that particular page. We also have this new, uh, brand new RU tab which, uh, so this machine has 16 megabytes of uh, memory. And we're seeing here that all of these colored blocks here are um, dedicated for fast app switching banks. So the blue ones are actually, they have an open app in them. And these purple ones have, uh, they're empty, but they're ready to take uh, an, an app. And then the rest of this free space is uh, available for applications to allocate banks for their own extended data. And then lastly, in here, we have this very cool visualization, which is showing us our CPU history. And although it looks like nothing's happening, if I grab this, this window and I just like shake it around a lot, you know, um, we, we, we get these little blips of CPU usage to show that it is, in fact, uh, tracking CPU usage. And if I, um, if I like, <coughs> do like this a lot, you know, we start to see these little things pop up. 
And if I just don't do anything, it goes back to normal. And uh, I don't know how useful it is, but I think it looks really cool. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm it. <laughs> All right. Okay. Next, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go back to file manager. And I'm gonna go. I'm gonna say go pictures. And I'm gonna go into graphic samples. So now in here, um, I just have. So this is a sample pack that I've put together. It's available for download. It just uh, has a whole bunch of files in different um, image file formats. So um, if I if I double click on it. If I just double click on it, it'll open in the application it's supposed to open in. But if I hold the control key, um, I, I intercept the opener utility um, and I, I, so that I can look at it. Now, it has highlighted the image viewer application by default, because that is the one that's assigned. And I can just click the open button. And that's going to launch the um, image viewer application for the first time, because it's, it's not open yet. And it's going to load in the file that I had asked it to open. So you see kind of you know approximately how long that takes. And you know that's, that's pretty cool, some kind of demo artwork. And you see some metadata and stuff here, right? So now we can uh, go home. And we can pick another file. And this file is in a totally different um, video mode and a different file format. And so with fast app switching, you can see how quickly it jumped into the app image viewer but then it has to load in the data for this particular image, and we get new metadata and a new data type loader. And this is, of course, in a, a different video mode, which we can see like that. So now, let's, well, I'll do that one more time. I'm gonna go back home, and I'm gonna pick this file here, classic.p, and we're gonna open that. Okay, and we get some, some different metadata again, and this, if I don't know if anybody recognizes it, but it, this is from, uh, I made a Petsky art renderer that I put on my website back in like 2018 or something. And uh, finally, uh, C64OS is able to view it because, um, all, as I said, all of the native graphic modes are now available in split screen, including char character modes. Um, and what's kind of neat here is that you actually have character mode on both sides of the split, but they use different character sets. So the lower half of the screen is using the default character set ROM, and the upper half of the screen is using the C64 OS uh, like custom, custom uh, character set. So, um, the next thing. How much time have I got? It's okay, I'm good. The next thing I'm gonna show, um, I'm gonna go up a directory here, and I'm gonna go into my Commodore graphics directory. And I'm going to double click on, I'm going to make these a little bit wider. And so you can see that these are actually very large files. So I'm going to double click this one here. And click open. And um, this is going to take a little while to load because it's 740, <laughs> 740 blocks. Um, but I will take the time to just say uh, what this is. So I'm opening a, um, a large CGF, uh, CGFX, or CGX is the extension, um, file. And um, <clears throat> the file format has the ability to store multiple frames, um, as well as uh, metadata about how those frames are to be laid out. So um, in this example, um, the, the metadata indicates that the frames are an animation. So you can have animations up to 256 frames. And you can also um, set, the di set different frame rates and different looping properties and so on. And we have this animation menu. We just hit play here. So now we have uh, now we have Star Trek memes <laughs> in C64 OS. Um, and another kind of neat thing here is that um, if I pause it, I can actually scrub through the frames, which is kind of cool. Um, and there's also like some looping properties, so I can say like instead of looping, I can say bounce, and then uh, when it plays, it 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 bounces, which looks kind of cool for certain types of uh, animations. 
Um, okay, so I'm gonna just, uh, what do we got next? Um, and of course, um, while that is uh, loaded into memory, of course, all these other things are also loaded into memory, right? So we can go back to our chess game and, you know, hey, our chess game is actually still open, even though we had that, uh, that animation loaded in there. So next, I will, I'll pick something different. I'm going to pick this uh, teapot, 3DK. 3DK was actually, um, 3DK was kind of um, an earlier file format that I played around with when I was experimenting with these matrix uh, images or experimenting with multi-frame images and working with the REU, um, all the features of the 3DK file format have been incorporated into the CGFX file format. So the CGFX file format is based on a, uh, a RIF media container. And so it can have, it has different chunks and it can have like, it can have chunks for sprites and it can have chunks for different frames and it can have chunks for uh, different types of metadata and um, so, you know, for example, you see this lower metadata box here with like the artist and source and the year. Um, normal, usually C64 graphics files don't have that kind of metadata, but um, if the metadata is available, it gets loaded in to that, uh, to that lower box. Um, the file format itself also has support for um, as I said, some non-native video modes. So it has support for IFLI and uh, FLI, and also some of the, inter the other interlaced modes. Uh, but they they do require um, a custom viewer. Uh, so you know what the file format supports and what the viewers support is they're, they're kind of the two different things. This is a big one, <laughs> <clears throat> but it's cool. Damage him on a 64, not a fast loader. That's right. <laughs> um, yeah, so the uh, multi frame images, they can be used for um, animations, as we saw, or for panoramas, or for um, 3D models, like this one. And so we get this crosshair here, and we can now just drag wow. this. Uh, no wow. kidding. Jeez. <laughs> and, uh, and Thanks. And so we can, you know, we can actually rotate it like in, in 360 degrees in that direction. And we can go all the way to the top. And we can go all the way to the bottom. Whoops. Hold on a second. Don't worry, it didn't crash. It's just the mess adapter. Okay. So, um, and the last thing I, uh, how much time have I got? Last thing that I'll show and then I'll, I'll uh, maybe take some questions. I'll go home. And I'll go back to uh, App Launcher, and I'll open up the uh, usage utility again. And when we go to the RU, um, we can see that uh, now we have these these data banks, like this brown data banks here. So when I click on uh, banks like this, um, I'm setting the check mark on what bank I've selected, but when I pick this bank, um, it adds these little pluses to tell you that um, this particular uh, app has allocated these, um, these additional data banks. And when we go to the switcher utility, and we click on image viewer, you can see that it actually tells you that you know, th this application is using 512k of memory. And uh, yeah, that's uh, that is pretty much everything I had to show. Um, and uh, we can open it up for questions if uh, anybody has any questions. Anyway, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions? Yes. Have you tried to run it on the uh, B64 by Retro Games? Uh, yeah, actually, at my table, uh, one of the machines is the, the C64 Mini. Okay. And uh, it runs on both the Mini and the, 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 the Maxi, I guess they call it. Okay. Um, and uh, you, you, uh, you run it that way by um, configuring the machine with a virtual ID 64. Okay. So yeah. I'll come by and 
take a look. Yeah. Thanks. Any other questions? Your first uh, meeting, uh, and, then, sure. and then you. Um, so, where you were copying files between tabs in the uh, in the file manager, um, yeah. I saw that you were doing it between several partitions on the same device. Yeah. Um, so the OS is actually moving the data. It's not like move, like issuing a DOS copy command at any point, right? Like. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, it's it's doing both. So um, if you have two tabs and they are both on the same device. Mm -hmm. It'll just issue a copy command to the DOS mm -hmm. to copy the file from one place to another on that device. If you're on two different devices, it reads the data into main memory and then copies the data to the other device. So it, it'll, it'll, mm -hmm. it does both. It'll do whichever is available. Cool. Yeah. It can also um, recursively copy whole directory trees from any one device to any other device. Really, with no special commands or anything, you just move the folder. You just pick. It. You just pick a, a directory, or you pick multiple directories, mm -hmm. and you say copy to another tab, and it doesn't matter where it is. It'll copy the entire directory tree to that other place. Oh, that's great. As long as the other place has support for subdirectories, mm -hmm. like if you try and copy a subdirectory to a 1541 disk, it flattens it. Like it only copies the files, and they all end up in the same directory. Or like an ultimate, for example, like you know. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Like to, to a disk image. Yes. Did you have a question? Yeah. What the heck is a Petsky bot? <laughs> oh, Petsky bot. Yeah. You want to see a Petsky bot? Yes. Um, what um, is it? A Petsky bot is a, there's a guy on Twitter who is like obsessed with robots, and um, he he has drawn like thousands of these little uh, ASCII or uh, Petsky rather. Um, just give me a second here. What my Petsky bots here? Okay. So he, I, I've organized them into these folders by a hundred at a time, <laughs> and I made, uh, I made a, uh, I also gave them an extension so that they can be uniquely identified. And so there's there's big versions and small versions, and I think the big versions look cooler because they're they're bigger. Um, and so they have a da they have a data type loader in C64 OS, and you get this little metadata here saying what it is. And uh, they look like wow. this. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. And uh, another I mean, while I'm here, I'll just show that you can actually edit the file name up here. So I just change that to 9 and hit return. And then you get a different, you know, different pesky body. Wow. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, the guy's like obsessed. He's, 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 he's literally made, he just sits around and like draws these robots. And they're very, very creative. Um, yeah. Any other questions? Yes. Very good. Yeah. So I put, I don't read directions. <laughs> <laughs> My apologies if I put you on the spot. Absolutely appropriate. Can you talk about the upgrade bathroom version version? Yes. Um, so the updates are distributed as CAR files. And a CAR file stands for C64 Archiver. It's another file format that I invented specifically for C64 OS. And CAR files can embed uh, directory structures, as well as all of the standard Commodore metadata, like whether the file is a seek or a PRG file, and whether the file, and, and with Petsky file names and so on. And um, there's also different types of CAR files. So some of them are just general archives, which you can use to just like, like package up a, a directory with some files in it. And then when you um, double click it in the file manager, it opens a utility called the installer. And if it's just a general one, the button says extract, and you hit extract, and it just extracts it right where the thing is. If it's an install um, type car file, um, the button will say, instead of extract, it'll say install. And when you click it, it extracts the files, and it overlays them over top of the existing system files. And then after you've done that, you do have to reboot, because What's in memory is no longer what's on disk, and so you you have to reboot. I'm going to add um, I'm going to add some intelligence to the installer in the future that so that if it doesn't require a reboot, it won't, and if it does require a reboot, it'll auto reboot. And probably I'll do some things like if you have unsaved RAM banks, it'll probably check to make sure and tell you hey you've got unsaved apps in other banks first. Um, and so what you do have to do though is you you have to check for the for the the path. You have to check what your current version is, and you have to install the next version. So if you're on 1.0, you have to install 1.01. And then you reboot, and you're on 1.01. And then you can install 1.02. And there's a couple of little exceptions. For example, I put out a, uh, I put out a version of the 1.04 release that can be installed directly over top of 1.02. 
so you don't have to install 1.03 if you don't want. Um, and it, but it says in the instructions um, of every release what is its required minimum version. Um, yeah. So basically, right now it's 1.01, 1.02. Then you can go to 1.04, and 1.04 is what I'm actually currently selling. So if you were to buy it, you, you just get 1.04 right away. And then 1.05, you can install over top of 1.04. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. Actually, for, okay. For first, first guy and then back guy. Okay. Yeah, you. Yeah, you're good. Yeah, okay. Um, the SID preview is it a certain number of seconds that it plays, or is the whole SID uh, file that it can play? Is it yeah, so um, at the moment it doesn't detect the end of the file, and some some of them just loop forever, like because they're designed to loop forever, and some of them just kind of hit a natural end, and all of a sudden it just goes silent, but the thing still thinks it's playing. Um, but um, I have um, been building a database, a searchable database of HVSC tunes that have been relocated to be safe to play inside the OS to make sure that you're not going to get crashes due to incompatibilities. Um, and in that database, um, I have imported into that database the song lengths file. So all the song lengths of all the tracks is actually in that database. And the plan in the future is to, to be able to download the tracks and you'll get this and get the song length with it. But for now it, it just, just plays forever. <laughs> yeah. You yes, sir. Um, any sort of inter process communication thoughts like signaling or Yeah, so messaging? the apps are not actually the apps are not actually running simultaneously. Um, but when they switch, they route message like they can pass messages to each other, but they route them through um, the RU work bank. So there's one bank of the RU that's dedicated for the operating system, and it's basically just like a temporary cache of stuff. Um, so like when you're in File Manager and you want to open uh, a file in an app, but that app's already open the file reference structure gets copied into the REU. And then the app gets switched, and then the app gets a notification that there's this new file open message, and it has a, a copy of the, actually the, the file reference then gets copied into the main memory of the new app. So it, it, it does, there is some kind of like that, but it's not, it's not the, the apps aren't running at the same time, so it's not like what you would think from like IPC of like Unix or whatever. Yeah. So yeah. You don't need semaphores. No, you don't need semaphores. Yeah. But yeah. still, you could have apps that share something that isn't just a clipboard based. That's right. Yeah. Yep. Uh, user? Yep. Uh, you have so much uh, memory left in that. Are you, uh, you have like a RAM drive that you can kind of, like, idea for a RAM drive where some of those, you know, you can mount it as a RAM drive so you can load some of that stuff a lot faster? Yeah, um, I, I should look more into exactly what it takes to get like a software RAM drive working. Um, but um, it takes some memory as well from the machine to run the RAM DOS. Um, but yeah, it's, 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 it's an option maybe for the future. Yeah. Yes. Okay, you talked about the UI toolkit being object oriented. Yeah. Talk about uh, or show us what it looks like for an application developer. I can't do that right now. <laughs> I can't do that right here in front of everybody else. <laughs> but I, I can show you over at uh, my table if you want to come over sure. and take a look at that. <laughs> yeah. You have another question? One other quick thing. Sorry, I'm, sure. I, I was a little late to the party, and uh, just now I, I heard you talking about an updater to 1.05. 1.05 exists now. Yeah, so this First is, this is, um, yeah, so if we go to uh, settings. Because that's pretty fresh then, right? Yeah, and then we go to about. We have our about C64 OS utility, and we're currently on uh, 1.05. And we can also click on that to see a build number. So this came out. Um, uh, uh, yeah. 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 So that's yeah. That's kind of how you can check what version you're on. 
Yes. Did you mention anything about Cabinet 128 compatibility? I thought you used to have some notes on how you could limp along with it. Um, yes, it'll run on a Commodore 128, but it doesn't run in 128 mode. Um, and I have some support for extra 128 hardware, like um, there's some support for using the extended keyboard. And um, as I said earlier, there's like the auto boot. You can, you can use the auto boot sector in 128 to, to auto boot C64 OS. Um, there's some possibility of being able to use the VDC from 64 mode. Um, but that's about it. I'm not planning on actually writing like a 128 OS. It seems like the dual screen thing would be kind of ideal for some of what you do now with the, the bar. Yeah, yeah you, you can actually access the VDC chip from 64 mode though. Like so, um, like that game, that whatever that Dungeon Curl game is, that came out a little while ago. What was that, what's that game? You know the game? Uh, I had Beholder. Okay. I have Beholder came out a while back, and it runs in 64 mode. But if you're running it on a 128, you can you can hook up two monitors, and you can see the map at the same time you see the game. So yeah, there's there's some there's some possibility for using the VDC if you're on a 128. But there's no support for it yet, but there's some possibility for that. Oh, we're on time. We're pretty much out of time, I think. Okay. Thank you. So thank you.